Hi guys, welcome to my channel. Before we get started, make sure to hit that like button and also subscribe to my channel. What is nanotechnology? So make sure to watch the full video. Overview Nanotechnology is the process of creating new structures, materials, and technologies by modifying matter at a scale close to the atomic level. The technique promises to advance science in a variety of fields, including medical, consumer goods, energy, materials, and manufacturing. Engineered structures, systems, and gadgets are referred to as nanotechnology. All other scientific disciplines, including chemistry, biology, physics, materials science, and engineering, can benefit from nanoscience and nanotechnology, which involve the study and utilization of incredibly small objects. The beginning Long before the term nanotechnology was coined, physicist Richard Feynman gave a talk titled, There's Plenty of Room at the Bottom, at an American Physical Society meeting at the California Institute of Technology, Caltech, on December 29, 1959, which laid the foundation for the theories and concepts that would later become the basis of nanoscience and nanotechnology. Feynman presented a method in his lecture for how scientists would be able to control and manipulate specific atoms and molecules. Professor Norio Taniguchi first used the term nanotechnology in his studies of ultra-precision machining more than 10 years later. Modern nanotechnology didn't start until 1981, when the scanning tunneling microscope was created, allowing scientists to see individual atoms. The basics of nanoscience and nanotechnology, an illustration of how nanotechnology was applied in the pre-modern era, is found in medieval stained glass windows. Credit, Nanobionet. Nanotechnology is so tiny that it's difficult to comprehend. 10 to 9 of a meter, or 1 nanometer, is 1 billionth of a meter. Listed below are a few concrete examples. 1 inch is made up of 25 million, 400,000 nanometers. About 100,000 nanometers thick is a sheet of paper. Comparatively, the size of the Earth would be 1 meter if a marble were a nanometer. The ability to observe and manipulate single atoms and molecules is central to nanoscience and nanotechnology. Everything on Earth is composed of atoms, including the food we consume, the clothing we wear, the homes and buildings we inhabit, and our own bodies. A tiny object like an atom, however, is invisible to the human sight. With the standard microscopes used in high school science classes, it is actually impossible to see. Early in the 1980s, the microscopes required to view objects at the nanoscale were developed. The advent of nanotechnology was facilitated by the development of the appropriate equipment, including the Atomic Force Microscope AFM, and Scanning Tunneling Microscope STM. Although nanoscale materials have been utilized for ages, current nanoscience and nanotechnology are relatively recent. Colors in the stained glass windows of medieval cathedrals hundreds of years ago were produced by different sized gold and silver particles. It's only that the artists of that era were unaware of the fact that the techniques they employed to produce these exquisite works of art really changed the composition of the materials they were using. In order to benefit from materials' enhanced properties, such as higher strength, lighter weight, improved control of the light spectrum, and higher chemical reactivity than their larger scale counterparts, today's scientists and engineers are developing a wide range of methods to purposefully make materials at the nanoscale. Risks to workers The size range of nanomaterials is between 1 and 100 nanometers. Materials start to display distinctive characteristics at this scale, which have an impact on physical, chemical, and biological behavior. The core of new technology is the study, creation, and application of these qualities. Exposure to specially tailored materials may occur for workers in industries related to nanotechnology. This comprises brand new proportions, forms, and physical and chemical characteristics. Uncertainty exists over the occupational health risks connected to the production and use of nanomaterials. The current state of knowledge on the predominating exposure pathways, possible exposure levels, and material toxicity of nanomaterials is quite limited. According to recent research studies, low-solubility nanoparticles are more hazardous than larger particles mass for mass. Surface chemistry and particle surface area are excellent predictors of the responses seen in animal and cell culture models. According to studies, certain nanoparticles may be able to go from the respiratory system to other organs. Understanding how these special characteristics may result in particular health outcomes is a topic of ongoing research. NIOISH's initiative, the federal government's program on nanotechnology health and safety is headed by NIOSH. Research and activities are coordinated by the NIOSH Nanotechnology Research Center 
NTRC, which was founded in 2004. Pioneers Working pioneers have made a number of significant technological advancements. The controlled deposition of single atomic layers was made possible by the invention of molecular beam epitaxy by Alfred Cho and John Arthur at Bell Labs in 1968 and its development in the 1970s. As atomic layers were developed one on top of the other, this method enabled nanostructuring in one dimension. In the production of compound semiconductor devices, it later gained significance. A similar application of nanostructuring produced more energy-efficient semiconductor lasers for use in compact disc players, and sandwiching one nanometer thick layers of non-magnetic sensor materials between magnetic layers in computer disc drives resulted in significant increases in storage capacity. The scanning tunneling microscope was created in 1981 at IBM's Swiss research facilities by Kurt Binnick and Heinrich Rohr. By enabling researchers to visualize the placement of specific atoms on surfaces, this instrument represented a groundbreaking advance. It led to the invention of numerous scanning probe technologies for nanoscale investigations and awarded Binnig and Rohr the Nobel Prize in 1986. Buckminster Fullerene's Structural Makeup Another significant step in the development of nanotechnology was the observation of novel carbon structures, which was recognized with Nobel Prizes for the discoverers. The first fullerene, the third known form of pure carbon, after diamond and graphite, was found in 1985 by Robert F. Curl, Jr., Harold Delia Croto, and Richard E. Smalley. Because of its likeness to the geodesic domes favored by American architect R. Buckminster Fuller, they termed their finding Buckminster Fullerene, aka Buckyball. Buckyballs are one nanometer in diameter and are technically known as C60 due to the 60 carbon atoms that make up their hollow spherical structure, see figure. Carbon nanotubes are long tubes of varied diameter made of carbon rings that were first found in 1991 by Sumio Dejima of the NEC Corporation in Japan. When considered collectively, these novel structures startled and intrigued scientists about the potential to create well-defined nanostructures with novel, unexpected features. The scanning tunneling microscope allows atoms to be pushed about on the surface, in addition to allowing for the imaging of atoms by sweeping a sharp probe tip over a surface. Some atoms could be coaxed to stick to the imaging tip of the probe and then be released from it by applying a modest bias voltage to the tip. By arranging 35 xenon atoms in the proper positions on a nickel surface, Donald Eigler was able to spell out the letters that make up the IBM company emblem in 1990. The public was interested in this demonstration because it displayed the accuracy of newly developed nanoscale tools. At nanoscale dimensions, composition and structure are no longer the only factors that determine a material's qualities. New phenomena that are connected to quantized effects and the predominance of surfaces and interfaces are displayed by nanomaterials. The overall size of objects is comparable to the typical wavelength for basic excitations in materials in the nanometer zone, which leads to quantized effects. For instance, the wavelengths of electron wave functions in semiconductors, also known as de Broglie waves, are typically in the range of 10 to 100 nanometers. The wavelengths of electrons, photons, phonons, and magnons are only a few examples of these excitations. By carrying energy quanta through the materials, these excitations control the dynamics of their propagation and change from one form to another. The movement and interaction of these excitations in the material are affected when the size of structures is similar to the size of the quanta. Small structures might restrict flow, produce wave interference effects, and apply other quantum mechanical selection criteria that aren't readily obvious at bigger dimensions. So, that's it for today. We hope you enjoyed the video. Use the comments section below to tell us your thoughts about the video. Also, make sure to subscribe to our channel and click the bell button to be notified of all the latest videos.